How's it going, everyone? It is Rob and Johnny for episode five of MMRK. Rob, how's your week been? How was Easter? It's been good. Easter was great. The Easter bunny did visit this household and <laughs> the kids were excited. I was excited. I found all the eggs. <laughs> so, um, yeah, was was really keen on getting back into training, trying to burn off some of those eggs. 100%. What about yourself? Did you get into the Easter spirit? Yeah, for sure, man. I headed back home uh, to see the family where we actually watched UFC 287. So it was pretty nice, but I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of chocolate. I'll be honest with you. There's a there's a couple of chocolates that I like, like Ferrero Rocher. No. I know. I know. I know. Shocking news. <laughs> Are you a big fan yeah. of chocolate, Rob? Oh, man, like, oh, yes and no. Yeah. Like I have my on and offs. Some like it's flavor of the month, really. Like, Fair. I'm either in a f- chocolate frenzy or I'm not, sort of thing. Um, yeah. Ferrero Rocher is a thing. Is an uh, like a fan favorite for everybody. Yeah. They, they actually brought out Ferrero Rocher Easter eggs this year. So I got to- s- Did they actually? I got stuck into them. Ah, uh, now I'm kind of <laughs> they regretting did, it. They did. I'm going to go to But I also was watching UFC 287 on Sunday. Yep. I was actually I was actually on, um, like I, I mentioned before, the the Twitch stream with Jen Polva. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, and Viss. And we were we were kicking it there, watching watching the fight and what a fight it was. Oh, dude, it was an insane event, and we're going to be covering everything from Uf- UFC two eight seven, the main card especially, but also a little bit of the prelim because that Gaslam fight was insane, and we'll get into that in a second. If you are watching on YouTube, please do like the video; it really does help. Subscribe if you're new, and be sure to leave us questions in the comments for the things that you would like to to know from us at the end of the podcast. So. Rob, we need to start talking about UFC 287, of course, and we will start with the the main event. So, Pejera, I think that's how you pronounce it, right? It's not Pereira, it's Pejera. 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 Yeah, I think so. I tried saying it last week and <laughs> it came out funny. So, I was there, like, there was Pereira someone, it is. <laughs> yeah, there was someone from Portugal that actually said you got it pretty close, um, but it was Pejera versus Adesanya for the title. Rob, I'm just going to ask you, man. What were your thoughts about this fight? Because to me, it was pretty insane. <laughs> yeah, let me let's let's break the let's get straight into it. Let's break this down. Yeah. Okay. I I think we were we were graciously given mm. a, a a a window into like some really high level kickboxing, some really high level striking. It was yeah. phenomenal to see. You could see both dudes were just very cautious. Uh, with their approach, feeling each other out, throwing some some leg kicks. You see, when when I mentioned with uh, the fight between Pereira and Adesanya mm. last week, a big thing was the unknown element. What unknown element can can Adesanya bring into this fight to try to get a different result than last time? What can he do differently? And I said perhaps wrestling because he did have some success with it in the first fight. Mm. But what we saw. I feel was a much more aggressive Adesanya. Yeah. And their, their their first bout in mixed martial arts, that is, Pereira had a slower start than Adesanya. Adesanya come out faster and had a lot of success in the earlier rounds with Pereira slowly working him down, mm-hmm. um, taking advantage of some of the, the kicks he was landing and, and the pressure he was using and getting Adesanya in the late, later rounds. Adesanya didn't let it get that far this time. He yeah. put pressure on him early. He was aggressive early. And they had that 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 trading exchange. Mm. And Adesanya ends up knocking him out. And let me say, because you could see a, a, a similar story to the first fight was unfolding with Pereira and the leg kicks and the calf kicks that he was was landing very effectively on Adesanya. He was using those kicks. And Pereira, you could see, was he was just chipping away, taking his time, biding his time, chipping mm. away to take advantage of him in the later rounds like he has before. Adesanya being very aggressive, hyper-aggressive um, in, in, in the first and second rounds, pushing forward, mix that up. You know, kind of I, – I, I think he lulled – Pereira into a sense of um, urgency. Mm. You know, he kind of he kind of set a pace in the fight that lulled Pereira into following that sort of high volume aggressiveness. And then when Pereira landed that kick, he his blood was up. You mm. know, and I think he he went forward for the kill. He thought, here it is again, my moment. And Adesanya, I've got to give it to him because I am. I'm sure he studied and he researched and he practiced, choreographed that that 
oh, that one movement, that that one scenario where he's playing rope dope on the fence, yeah. sees that Pereira starts stringing more than two, three combos together, and hits him with hook because Pereira has his hands down when he's throwing volume volumes higher than two, three. Yeah, especially when he comes in trying to finish him with the left hook, right hook. Adesanya hands up, leans back, plays it, plays possum on the fence, mm. throws the right hook whilst Pereira's hands are down, stuns him, lands another one to finish him clean. And that's, you know, history rewritten, isn't it? Absolutely insane, man. And I think yet you had to watch that ending a couple of times after that, and especially in slow-mo, because initially when I saw it, like, and, and, I, and I'm, I've seen some tweets afterwards and after the fight, people saying, oh, he just got lucky with the right hook. That's actually not what happened. You know, if, if you go down in slow motion and break it down, Izzy, even though he has his hands over his face and he's rolling with the punches, he is keeping an eye on Fajera's hands at all times. And when he threw that, that hook or that punch, he never really <laughs> retracted and all hands were, were dropped. And then that's when he went in with it. He knew exactly what he was doing and he even admitted that he was playing possum. It wasn't just some lucky punch out of nowhere. It was like mm. some really, in fact, really high level boxing that you know you might not necessarily see in the MMA all the time. Well, yeah, it, it, it's ex it's exactly that. If you if you look at Pereira's past fights, when he pushes up, when he pushes someone up against the fence, mm. and he's looking to string together combos of two, three, four, and, and he's and he's looking to to hurt, he does. He has the same rhythm. He has the same holes. He doesn't bring his hook all the way back to his chin. Mm. He's most open and susceptible to getting hit in that moment, and. Oh, man, like I said, Pre um, Izzy did a phenomenal job of of researching that, studying that, sticking with it when he was in that scenario yeah. to have the guts to, to 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 pull that off and to win the way he did. You know, especially with the story and the comeback after three losses. You know, hats off to him. For you sure, know, man. I'm not I'm not an Izzy fan, but <laughs> I can respect. You know, phenomenal striking and skill sets and movements when when I see it, and uh, mate, that was a, that was a, that was a good win. That was a very good win for um, sure. On the back of that, can I can I jump in and just clarify something that I, I've seen rumoring and going around the internet? Yeah, you know, the cyberspace. Okay, <laughs> so my reaction to that fight. As has made it to a couple of different channels, and a lot of the comments are "Look at Rob, heartbroken." You can see he just saw his title <laughs> chance up in smoke. Look at Rob, <laughs> super sad, gutted. Is he got the win? No, okay. For one, okay. For one, my reactions to just about every knockout or fight with Izzy in it because I'm so hyper-focused. It's, it's pretty much the same. It's it's almost the same. I, mean, I think in the last Izzy knockout, I stood up because mm. there was more room. I've moved. I've since changed the location of the computer, okay? So I was <laughs> – my reactions are always the same. Don't look into it too much, everybody. But also, honestly, my my key feeling for for that fight when, when Izzy won was happy. Mm. I, w I was happy, man, because – I didn't realize it until it almost didn't happen that I want to fight Israel. I want to mm. fight and I want to take that belt back from Israel, not Pereira. Everyone was saying Pereira is a better uh, a better fight for Rob. Can't wait to see Rob fight Pereira. Uh, Pereira beats Izzy. Rob beats Pereira. Like, let's get this going. And, you know, I – Fresh blood, fresh blood. Like when, when people are asking me who would I rather fight, I, I don't care. It was always just for the belt. But now after seeing that it was almost it it was almost a thing. I like mm. I could have been fighting Pereira next instead of Adesanya. I realized that no, I want to fight Adesanya. I want to get the belt back from Adesanya. And I want to get that win against Adesanya. That's who I want to fight. And I'm not going to stop coming after him until I get that win. He's a puzzle for me and a challenge mm. for me that 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 I want, you know, that I, I need. It, it drives me to, to be better. That's what will take me to the next level and I can feel myself growing because I'm hunting him down like that, you know. Um, and, and 
that's how that's how I feel. That was what my reaction, all these emotions that was going through right. for me. That's what was happening because Adesanya got four attempts to beat Izzy. I only need three. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it in three. That's that's what I truly believe. I got so close yeah. last time. And and I know I, I I I have worked out the puzzle and I can work out the puzzle. And yeah, I I, I want that fight. I don't care how many people how many people's careers <laughs> I have to to gatekeep <laughs> and to to keep out. Of of you know achieving their their dreams in order for me to 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 chase to chase to chase my own. Okay, so, so I will ask yeah, you. That's that's the explanation to the. I'm I'm not sure hmm. if you can actually talk about this, and you might not genuinely know. But if you were to put your best guess on what your path could be, what Izzy's path after this could be in terms of who you both are fighting next, what do you think that will be or could be? Oh, mate, it, it is it is anybody's guess. The story makers for the UFC, yeah. they, they they conjure up some good stories, and and the guys in the divisions, myself included, sometimes mm. don't always agree, but they make for great selling stories. Yeah. If I can fight Adesanya for the title, I will. If they want me to fight people first, I will. Yeah. It's it doesn't matter because I'm not a dude that. You see a lot of guys when they're in my position, they don't want to fight these upcoming dudes because they're afraid of losing to them and missing out on the title shot. But I've always I always think to myself, mate, if you lose to anyone else bar the champion, then you weren't worth like you're not worthy of that belt in the first place. That's not how that's not how it works. Right. Like the the UFC belt is is just it's a shiny metal. It's the meaning behind the significance that you are better than everybody else. And if you don't beat everybody else, then you're not. Mm. That's why I want to beat Izzy. Yeah, you know, the, it, that's why I want to take the belt from him because yeah. he beat me before. But um, yeah, I guess. I guess where I'm at is I just want to fight, mate. Like <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> Obviously, if Pereira would have won, yeah, it would have would have been set out a little differently. Mm. You know, I'm pretty sure I would have been fighting Pereira yeah. next. Yeah, but it didn't happen that way. So, what happens? Who knows? Maybe Adesanya takes a little bit of time off right now. Mm. You know, he's gone two fights with that big dude. I don't think Pereira stays in the division. I think he's too big. I think the cuts take too much out of him because when Izzy knocked him out, he was out for a while. He was stone cold mm. on the canvas for a bit, mm. you know, and I think that is just due to how hard the cuts are for him because he's, he's a big dude. He is. Massive, massive dude. Um, I'd like to fight – if I have to fight um, – so, yeah, if I'd like to fight perhaps on the international fight week. Mm. I think the uh, first week of um, – is the first week of July? Yeah. Is is I think that's a wicked card. You know, what rumored Jones, Stipe, mm. Volkanovski, Rodriguez. That's you know what a phenomenal card to be on for sure. But uh, yeah, I guess UFC is still obviously trying to put pieces together. Whenever you get shifts in middleweights, there's they have to reorganize their storyboards. But uh, yeah, yeah, let's wait and see. No, absolutely. I and mean, I think what you mentioned about Pajeda and, and him in terms of him staying in the division or moving up, I think a lot of it is contingent on that. A lot of people were saying, well, it's easy. They, they, they run it back for the third or fourth time or whatever because they each have a knockout each. But we were talking about last week, Rob, immediate rematches for, for champions. Izzy obviously deserved that. He earned that immediate rematch because he defended the title for so long. Mm. Pajeda hasn't. He didn't defended the title successfully no. at all he won it and then he lost it so whether if he does stay in the division then that's a different story but if he actually is moving up then that leaves space and and, and i saw some chatter and i think it was from chow sonnen potentially potentially costa versus chemayev that was not confirmed it's very much yeah. a rumor but that could be that fight so you know who knows where that leaves you and who knows where that where that leaves Izzy. But do you have any final thoughts on that fight or or the next step in the middleweight division? Well well let me ask you, did you see the celebration dance? I did um, <laughs> from Adesanya after the fight. Which which aspect that? are you talking are you talking what? about the arrows or are you talking about the kid? <laughs> 
the kid. <laughs> I think the arrow thing was cool as like I gotta give it to him. You know, props when props when there's due, like yeah, that yeah, arrow yeah. thing was sick. Yeah. But um but the the kid thing, what what, what do you think about him mobbing <laughs> his old man getting clipped oh. like in front of his kid and you see his kid crying. <laughs> <laughs> and, and granted, I don't know if you've heard, yeah. granted, apparently the kid did that to him. He did. Like 10 years ago. Yes. Well, that, that's, that, that's what I was going to say. He can clearly hold a little bit of a, a grudge, is he, right? Like he didn't forget about that and he was sure to bring it out after he won. I thought it was so funny. Like, I don't care that it was a kid. It was like him getting his revenge back. It was a funny celebration. And, and per head up, yeah. to his credit, he didn't really care. Like, it was all because of the, it was the, it's the fight game. It's a bit of fun and entertainment, honestly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. What, do you, what yeah. did you think? Come on. What, like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny, but what did you think? Well, you know, you know I, I, well, I think if you shit talk, you're susceptible <laughs> to get shit talked back like correct fair game yes like, if you if you don't want the heat don't get in the kitchen sort of thing i'm all for that you reap what you sow yeah you can't really do that to a five-year-old you can't <laughs> you can't see a five-year-old talk shit about you and then get your little notepad and pen out and write his name down <laughs> for 10 years later that that's that what to he did me seems that's what a he did. Bit, <laughs> mate like, what would you do if you started if you started holding grudges to every five year old that pissed you off? Are you kidding me? I'd be going to war for the next forty years. Uh, <laughs> like, I'd be waiting until they're twelve. What's what's a susceptible age to put shit on them back? Like every every kid you fight in Fortnite is going to be on your list. <laughs> Mate, I've got <laughs> fights lined up every weekend till I'm 70. <laughs> like, like, dude, you, I don't know. This just seems, you know, <laughs> it seems petty. And and as Adesanya said, he is petty. But I don't, I don't like, man, that's a long grudge. You know <laughs> it, I mean? it is a long grudge. But, against, against, but. against a child. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. He wins. He wins. He, he wins. wins. We'll, we'll see what happens next. It's going to be very interesting to see what fights get lined up. Rob will be keeping a close eye on what happens with you next. But, of course, we had a bunch mm. of other fights happening at UFC 287. It, overall, it was a really solid card. And next up, we have Burns versus Masvidal. And I want to get your thoughts, too, on this, Rob, because Masvidal said whether he won or lost this fight, this was going to be his retirement fight. So... In the context mm. of that, how did you think this fight went? Uh, what I'll do is mm. I'll go. I'll start backwards and and yep. I'll start backwards, okay? Because I think Masvidal actually summed it up very, very well. So, <laughs> for one, I thought it was dirty by Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan comes up to him and says, "Hey, George, you said you were going to retire <laughs> after this fight." <laughs> <laughs> Put the mic up to him. It's like, what if he changed his mind halfway through? Or, he, you know, you put him on the spot, but whatever. Um, Masvidal, I think that would have to be one of the best retirement speeches I've ever heard. Mm. Okay. Because it not only does it sums up his retirement and why he's retiring, but it sums up his fight. Yeah. Honestly, this is how I feel his fight went. Hey, Masvidal says, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, obviously. I don't have that that <laughs> picture-perfect memory. <laughs> um, the punches and everything. <laughs> Mas, Masvidal said something that like, I hope that I inspired anybody else to change their dreams, uh, chase their dreams. I started from nothing mm. and here I am. And I just don't, I don't feel the same way in here anymore mm. that I used to. Okay, and I feel like that is super powerful because that's when you retire. I feel like that is when you retire. He, I don't know. It was just a powerful speech, in my opinion, because yeah, he he said, "I hope I inspired everybody else to 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 chase their dreams." You know, which is which is huge because he's he's an icon from someone who started backyard brawling with absolutely not a cent to their name yeah. to someone who's a multimillionaire and one of the biggest heads in mixed martial arts mm -hmm. combat sports ever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's 
one pro. Next is, he said, I just don't feel the same way in here anymore than I used to. And that's massive because when you start feeling that way, you can't try to beat these guys that are ranked three, two, one, and sure. are fighting for titles and hungry and sacrificing things and willing to die out there if you're not, yeah, you know, and that's how his fight went to me. The same, exactly how he explained it. It wasn't Masvidal we were seeing in there, like the, the Masvidal of old. It was a guy that was just a little bit behind the punches, mm. not the same amount of aggression and bad intentions as he used to have. A guy that just didn't have the violence that he used to. Mm. You know, it, it was just, yeah, he he just didn't have the same fight. He didn't have the same fight. Um and because Burns, to his credit, fought a phenomenal fight. For sure. He he was out striking Masvidal. Masvidal's notoriously a striker. Burns, yeah. notoriously a grappler. Yeah. Burns was out striking Masvidal, landing uh, super effective strikes. Um, hurt, he hurt Masvidal several times, several times. When he got Masvidal down, he held him down, took mm -hmm. advantage of him, wore him out. It was – um. Yeah, Burns was all over him in this fight. And and Masvidal summed it up in his speech. He said he's just not feeling the same. He didn't look the same. It looked like his last fight. Props to Masvidal. Like I said, came from nothing. Now he's here. He has everything. Icon of the sport. Phenomenal career. Mm. Fought everyone and their friend. Mm. You know, hats off to him. And, and, and what more could you ask for in terms of the way to go out? Like he was in his city – he went three rounds with someone that is is one of the best in the division. Potentially, maybe after another win, could be in, in contention for a title fight. It wasn't a knockout or anything like that. He had his speech. What more could you ask for in terms of a retirement from the UFC? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Congratulations, George Masvidal. You should be very proud of yourself. Absolutely. Um, and then the next fight. This was this was great. So Font versus Yanez. I absolutely felt that right hook that took Yanez down. Absolutely insane, man. What did you think about this about this fight? Dude, like <laughs> the way that right hook yeah. landed on Yanez, yeah. like yeah. 99% of other people would still be on that canvas. Like, oh, dude. They'd be in a coma, dude. Yeah. Like that was massive. It was nasty. I wasn't ex I I wasn't expecting Font to come out the way it is. I I I Everyone was riding the hype train of Yanez. Yeah. You know, Yanez was absolutely tearing through people. Yep. Young dude coming up, like running a muck on people. And Font said, you know what? Not today. <laughs> Not today. And he just put a beating on him. Yeah. Put a beating on him, you know. Um, yeah, mate. Like he just he, – he set a pace and never stopped. No. He never stopped. And and Yanez was trying to brawl with him, but it seemed like again he was one second behind. Yep. You know, he was one step behind Font's punches, and Font was just landing. Font had a magnet, like I mean, Yanez had a magnet on his head, yep. and Font's hands were, were, you know, like oh, it was great. It was beautiful. Yeah, it, it was, it was beautiful. It, it, it was it was especially <laughs> exciting to see because, as you said. Yanez, like everyone, he was on the hype train. Everyone was behind him. And for Font to come out swinging as he did, and, and to Yanez's credit, like he was trading back a little bit there, but he just got overwhelmed. And that right hook took him to the ground, the hammer fist. It was a brutal t TKO. Font, amazing, amazing job. What do you think is next for him in, in the division? Oh, it's hard to say. Like, Bantamweight is a stacked division right now. For sure. You know, it, he could honestly, like, go any which way. Um, yeah, just again, with that fight, Font moving in, he was he was initiating, like, a real, like, solid striking combos. And and Yanez was like, you see what he, he was trying to do, what he always does. He, he like, weathers it, rolls it, and mm. then counters in the pocket. But he just he just seemed one second behind and f like he couldn't recover from font strikes. Yeah. He couldn't recover and counter effectively the way he was because he wasn't leading with it. And font was just kind of yeah, he was just leading the dance, running a muck on him. Where does font go from here? 
it, it's it's oh mate, hard to say. There are there are so many killers in Ben and White right now. Ben and White is so stacked. Hundred percent. I mean, uh, we've what rank got a- does that does that leave leave Font? Uh, good question. I actually think the UFC. I'm gonna I'm gonna search it up right now because I think they've updated. Have they done the rankings yet? I don't know if they've done their rankings, but let's. I, I can pull it up right now. So, Ben and Wade. We obviously have Sterling as the champ, and it's very interesting because we have Sterling versus Cejudo coming up. Uh, there's a few fight nights in between. I think it's May is when their fight is taking place. Mm. Um, but where do we have? I mean, where is he? So Font is six. So ahead of Font in the rankings is Vera, Jan, mm. Sanhagen, O'Malley, Dashradali, and then obviously Sterling as, as the champ. So there's a few, <laughs> there's a few people there <laughs> in the line waiting. You know what I mean? What, what a nightmarish <laughs> top, <laughs> top five. Like, yeah, what a, what an uh, thanks, Phil. Yeah. What an absolutely nightmarish. <laughs> top five to to have to work your way through dude like absolutely <laughs> oh, insane man. it's a it's a, it's a horror division he's got for his, you. he's got his he's got his work cut out for him and I, I feel like honestly i feel like he's been in the game forever yeah <laughs> yeah what i mean who knows you know, what he's like, going to be doing next it's going to be interesting to see how the pieces fall together but rob will be here you know just in a matter of weeks talking about sterling um, versus Cejudo. that is what i keep saying i'm very excited to talk about that because i am a big fan of sterling yeah. um but moving on now we've got as well it was a very good fight holland versus ponzinibbio in the welterweight division rob what, what did you think of this fight i wasn't impressed with holland's performance really like i like holland okay okay i like him okay yep did has any information come out from Holland that his hand was still broken or anything like that to, to your knowledge? Because uh, I no. haven't heard anything about no. it. But he was certainly fighting yeah. like his right hand was broken still. Okay, because right. I think I counted that he threw it like four times, maybe. Mm. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> Let me just pick on the the size difference. <laughs> it looked funny almost. Yeah. Like, Holland looked like a giant yeah. compared to Ponzinibbio. Um, but honestly, I wasn't impressed. All right. <sighs> Fair. Um, Holland was just like. Yeah. He was just fading away, throwing the left hook. Mm. That's all he was doing. All he was doing. Um I mean, I mean, Ponce Dibio, yeah. he did Wasn't capitalizing. Yeah, he he disagreed instantly when the KO happened, but he literally fell face first. I don't think no, he had no. anything he could complain about. I mean, no. where does that leave Ponce Nibio? But you you overall you weren't really impressed with the fight. No, nah, well, Ponce Nibio, Holland 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 for for a, a picture perfect fight against like oh, I don't know, like he was he didn't really get hit very much. He just kept him at the end of his jab yeah. and danced around the cage the entire time. The problem with that is like he was just trying to catch him with a left hook. He wasn't very effective, I feel. No. You know, it was I, he got the knockout. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. He did get the knockout. So he was effective to some degree. But I just feel like Okay, this is why this is why <laughs> I'm not I wasn't super impressed. Okay. All right. It all just made sense to me just then. Because that fight could have been so much easier for him. Right. Okay. I know how Holland, how good Holland is, and he could have finished that fight in the first round. Mm. Debatably, he lost the first round. Okay. Debatably, he yeah. could have finished that right. fight in the. He could have finished that fight in the first round. Yeah. Um. He. I just feel like he made it a much unless his right hand was broken, mm. which which in, in fairness makes the whole fight seem like it makes sense yeah. okay but if it wasn't then he just made the fight harder than it could have been he had the range to hit him from across the cr- across the cage Ponzinibbio could kick him mm. if he could kick him he could punch him because his reach was like seven inches or something on him like yeah. it was massive it looked funny when the two dudes were in there dancing across from each other <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were big guys um yeah I just feel like Holland could have made that fight so much easier like he, he he could have like really put a beating on on Ponzinibbio, I really do believe that. Uh, Ponzinibbio arguing the knockout, Ugh, mate. No. Wake up to yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 like, I was saying, but, but then he was knocked out, yeah. and he was argu- he was arguing what he just woke up. Like 
No, yeah, he like he didn't realize what was happening. But like in that first round, though, I would have given that first round to Holland for sure. But he did almost drop him with that back fist. He was like standing on one leg and he got the back fist. It could have actually ended there. And then if that had happened, Rob, like we might be having a completely different discussion right now. The, the back fist that was in the second round, right? Ah, uh, from the first, I think, wasn't it? Maybe I maybe I wrote my notes wrong. Was it? <laughs> yeah. End of the first. I'm pretty. I think it was right at the end of the first, or end of the possibly. Se- I'll pull up. I'll pull up the notes. Uh, was it? I mean, but, okay, but either okay. either way, either way, you know, like I, Holland still got the win. Ponzinibbio just disagreed with it. Um, he just he, he wasn't defending. He, he went. He, he fell face first, and you can't give the referee that inch. Otherwise, they're going to call the Does, fight. Let's say that happened in the first round. Yeah. Does that give Holland the round? I would say he had the round. I, I, I honestly, I, I called it ten nine ten nine Holland. Cause, yeah. Because because he got he was getting his legs carved up, carved up. He was, but. Yeah, I don't know. I st- I still had it going to. Um, and I'll try and he find landed, the results. He landed that back fist. He landed that back fist with literally like a second to go. And yeah, like you can always argue. Oh, but well, if there was five more seconds in the round, but there wasn't. Yeah, he waited until then to do it. Like no, fair that's enough. That's not how the round. That's why I reckon ten minute rounds <laughs> should be a thing. But <laughs> but um. But yeah, it, it yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, look, it, like I said, I don't I'm not an, I'm not I'm not um unimpressed because yeah. He was it was a bad fight. Was, I'm, I'm upset because he could have made it so much easier for himself. Fair enough. That's all. I mean, like I, so I've pulled up the the official mm. judges scorecards. So it did go in in their opinion across the board 10-9, 10-9 in the first and second round, and then he obviously got the knockout in in, in the third. So I mean, Mm. Fair. I mean, fair, I I thought he did all right. Like I thought he was switching stances pretty well. He was mixing it up. Ponzinibbio definitely did better in the first round, but <laughs> as, as the fight went on, like it was clear that that Holland was getting the win. I, I think he was switching stances because he was getting his leg caved in. I know, but, but what else do you do? What else do you do in that circumstance, right? Aside from trying to check the kicks. We. You punch him in the face. Well, that's what he did. He's got bro. ten inches of reach on him. <laughs> I thought he. It took three rounds. He still did three it. Three rounds. He still did. He, it. He, he could hit him from the stands, bro. Like, <laughs> and he had the superior striking. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I just like when you, you know what like what what sticks in my head when he was fighting. Vittori, yeah. the way he was striking with Vittori, he was fast, he was crisp, he was using his reach, his range. And I don't know, that 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 <laughs> Kevin Holland to this Kevin Holland, not yeah. the same. Not okay. the same. All righty, all righty. Well, Holland did get the right. win. And it, go on, go on, finish what you're saying. <laughs> how, much, how much power does he have in his back fist? Bloody hell. Oh, dude, like, insane. That's how we knocked out. That's how we knocked out Jacare on the ground on his back. I I, I thought he he like, had it there. If there was another f- ten seconds in that round, he probably would have got the win. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Ten more seconds. <laughs> well, you we didn't have ten seconds. You you're you're arguing for ten minute rounds or ten minutes. That that would have happened in ten minutes for sure. <laughs> yeah, if it was ten minutes, but it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't. <laughs> I feel you being a bit harsh <laughs> on Holland, but moving on to the first fight of the main yeah, card. Yeah. So we had uh, Rosas versus Rodriguez. Now, man, talk about a hype train just slamming on the absolute brakes. Derailed. Rob, what, yeah. what did you think about this? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Go on. I love seeing I love seeing the hype trains just get derailed. <laughs> I love it. Uh welcome to the main card, brother. Like, <laughs> you know, welcome. Welcome to the show. Like, that's oh, that's how it is, man. That's how it is. And that's the one thing I like I wanted to see from him is how he fights adversity yeah. and how he bounces back. Because he'll either come He'll either he fought adversity and he lost. Yep. Okay, he blew his load too early, <laughs> and he had nothing else. And and he he fought a dude that was experienced enough to not invest too early in anything. Yeah, and just win the fight. 
mm-hmm. you know, and he started putting a beating on Rosas. But, but, um, like, <laughs> oh, what's going <laughs> so on? My son's coming. And Jackie. and here we have a, a guest yeah, appearance I in the podcast. You, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Wants to talk about Someone Rosas. Someone didn't lock the door. <laughs> um, this is why we but, do podcasts. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, Jace. Hold on. But yeah, Rosas. Yeah, he he'll either he'll either, who who knows how he comes back from this. Yeah. Okay. Because there's there's two things. Either either. He goes away, says, mm-hmm. you know what? I lost because of experience and because I made bad decisioning and didn't pace myself properly. Yeah. Or he goes away making excuses for why he did what he did yeah. and he won't grow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if he if he goes back, learns from his mistakes and errors, which there were. Oh, yeah. Then he comes back a monster. Remember, the kid's 18. Yeah. 18, right? Fighting on the biggest cards of the year. Yeah, man. Where- yeah, yeah, he might be a monster. I mean, we'll as you said, it just depends on 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 how he he takes this loss. Like I was just, and maybe because he was full of confidence, and clearly the guy was very confident. You know what I mean? Like young in the UFC, he was on a bit too of a streak, confident. but too confident, <laughs> right? Like he came out, and to be honest, he he didn't like he looked all right in that first round, and I would actually say he won that first round, but he just exhausted himself and could do literally he had no answers. In the next two rounds, literally none, because he just gassed himself. Well, that's it. He won the first round mm. at what cost? Yeah, at the cost know? of the fight. But that's, that's <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess that's the the problem, though, isn't it? It's like if he goes in there round one, mm. has that halfback sinks in, sinks in the choke, finishes him, he doesn't grow. He's the next best thing. True. He's a genius for the way he did it, like. Yeah, similar to how Chemayev did uh, went against Kevin Holland that time. Mm. He just went balls to the wall mm. and and got the sub. Um, Fair enough. I mean, yeah, yeah. Gonna. I think. I think it's. I think it's a. It's a good wake up call. I think he, he right now is a pivotal moment in his career. Yeah. That if he goes back, he looks over the tapes, sees mm. what he did wrong, understands that his shit stinks like the rest of us. Yeah. And then comes back with a new approach. Mm. He becomes the next biggest thing because, yeah, I remember speaking to him that week, and he was t- saying he was ready for a title shot. Yeah, you know? no, no, he wasn't. <laughs> Poor dude. <laughs> no, no, you weren't. I, I, um, I wanted to, say- but I'm not hating on him. No, I'm not no, hating yeah. on him. Yeah, fair. I, I wanted, I wanted to say yeah. though. So obviously Rodriguez got the win when he was doing his post-fight speech. The crowd was just not reacting at all, and I and I kind of felt <laughs> bad for the guy. Like, I, I I don't know, like he won the fight, but it felt a little deflating. Did you get the same feeling? <laughs> I, I I don't remember it too well. I don't remember it too well. To You've answered the question. <laughs> I don't I don't remember it too well. Fair. Fair. But I mean, of, yeah. we'll see what happens with Rodriguez after this. But the, the thing that we want to talk about next, even though this wasn't on the main card, we have to talk about Gastelum, right? Because that- Need to. That, Need to. That ended the, the prelim card, and it was an insane fight to the stage where I would say, Gastelum has to be back, right, Rob? It was insane. Mate. <laughs> if you don't think it, he told you yeah. at the end of his speech. Yeah. Like the was that was crazy the way he was like, I have returned. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude, like unreal. Good unreal, on him. But phenomenal fight. Like he just he just comp- I don't know. He just moved. He moved so well, stayed light on his feet, yep. was picking Curtis apart, mm-hmm. picking Curtis apart. The only times he was getting hit was when he would slow down and and just trade for a little too long. Yeah. Curtis had no answers. Curtis Yeah, you know, that's the leap for 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 like the top ten dudes, even though Castlem's not top ten anymore, which blows my mind as well. It's insane. But um Yeah, it's uh there's a level and you could see a sheer difference in in, in that fight. For sure. I mean, you have to say, I, I thought Curtis definitely won the third round because one of the judges' scorecards, and I wanted to talk about this, called the fight 30 to 27 to, to Gastelum. And clearly, Gastelum won. 
but not 30 to 27. I thought, especially in that third round, Curtis was a little bit more competitive than that. But I don't know. Maybe we just we I, just disagree with the judges now I, nowadays. I didn't I didn't think Curtis was competitive enough to win the round though. In the isn't 30 27 just like isn't that just like Gaslam winning all three rounds? Yes, but I, w- I, I would say I, th- I would say Curtis won the third round. I think he actually did get more significant strikes against Gasolin. That and that was just my opinion, right? Like that I, that judge obviously thought that Gasolin won that round, and that's why it was thirty twenty seven. But I saw a lot of people disagreeing because Curtis they thought Curtis won that third round. I I think Gasolin won that round. All I right, I think Curtis just like it may have just looked like. He was landing significant strikes because he threw one punch <laughs> around. Like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, Curtis Curtis was a standing boxing bag for most of it. The, the only oh, times sure. Gastelum, yeah. I remember screaming at, screaming at the camera being like, don't enter the phone booth. Don't do it. Because <laughs> Curtis must hit like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Right? You can tell. He's just like, he's like just a bundle of muscle. Yeah. So, and and Gaston, like he gets a little phone booth happy. He gets it, <laughs> and he has such a good plan going into it of being light on his feet, moving, evading, popping him yep. with a jab, then the one two, then the lead hooks. He was doing so well, utilizing his leg kicks. He, he was doing really, really well. Um, I don't think Curtis won any of the rounds. Fair enough, but yeah, great fight. I, I thought it was fight of the night. What who got fight of it the was, night? It was it was that and the Izzy fight were both fight of the it night. It was that? Yeah. yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. Because it deserved to be. It was sick to watch. To be honest, Rob, should have been on the main yeah. card. And I don't know why to this like I just don't know why that wasn't on the main card, but oh. I'm not a booker. I don't know. Mate. But that, <laughs> that was yeah. that was UFC like, two two eight seven. Bit- what are your final thoughts, Rob? Uh yeah, Gaslam and Curtis should have been on should have been on the main card. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's that's where I sit. I reckon I would have been happy with that as co-main because that was Fair. sick. And I don't think there's a fight Gaslam's in that isn't that isn't sick. Um, yeah, but yeah, I uh, yeah, the the hunt for Izzy is still on. It's still on. It's still hunting season, so I'm I'm, I'm yeah. excited. I'm happy. I'm happy with the outcome of the main event. Uh, and to all the guys, just writing comments saying, uh, "I've said is he blah blah blah, is he this, is he that?" I'm coming. All right, and I'm gonna make you eat your words. Okay, Rob. I'm gonna make Rob's you eat your put words. it out. He's, he's put the challenge out. Well, like Rob, genuinely, I I hope something does work out for you. I want to see a fight this year. I don't want you to go another year without fighting, to be honest, man. Um, but in terms oh, you and me both. Yeah. The budget is <laughs> tight. <laughs> Mate. Too much chocolate. We're time. rationing. We're <laughs> rationing right now. It was one egg for everyone. <laughs> Shouldn't have bought those Ferrero share eggs, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Bobby needs a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, but the last bit of UFC news, like obviously we have a fight night this weekend. The main event is Holloway versus Allen. Rob, I guess we'll talk about that next week after it happens, right? Yeah, that is a stellar fight. Stellar fight. You know, the return of Holloway, he's been he's been absent for a long time. I think he was just really enjoying life with yeah. his family. And Allen's the, the new hottest commodity on the block mm. so yeah i can't wait to to see this weekend's card and you will hear us yeah you will, we will have plenty to talk about next week for sure so stay tuned everybody what's your quick prediction can i ask i think holloway by decision all right like he's a very hard dude to put away yeah and unless you're volkanovsky and has like unless you have volkanovsky gas tank <laughs> then you're not staying in there with him you, that's what happens. Anybody who that doesn't have the Holloway tank or better, which yeah. I think the you know the Volk tank just can't keep up, and they start to. And there's a main event. It's five rounds, dude. Holloway lives in five rounds, but All he's right. also been away for a long time. I think Holloway still, but 
All right, well, let's see. We'll have our reactions to that fight night and to all the other fights on the main card, especially next week. But moving Mm -hmm. on to the game segment. So we have news of a Sony state of play. 47 minutes. I know. uh, uh, Maybe the the reactions, we need to leave more time for that. We can can cut down on some of the game's news because, to be honest, it was a week where not, not much happened. In in all honesty, um, but <laughs> like we're in such a like dry spell right now because all the big games and all the releases they're gonna they're gonna come during June July during that kind of what used to be the E three period and now is just when everyone does their major mm. events right. Mm-hmm. It's become like a um, like a few months, yeah, a yearly thing, yeah, yeah, pretty much. But Sony has announced. So tell though, me what's happening. So what's happening in the world? State of play. Sony has announced a brand new state of play that's going to be featuring twenty minutes of new gameplay for Final Fantasy sixteen. It's going to be taking place. Uh, well, at the time of this recording, tomorrow PT time. Um, I think depends on how the Australian time conversions take place. It's light on information in terms of what exactly is going to be showed, but it does follow up on their February state of play where they showed off a little bit of Suicide Squad. So nice to see another event from Sony. Rob, are you a big Final Fantasy fan? I don't think we've had this discussion yet. I I am. I am. I uh, I grew up on it. Um, yeah. My favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy. Final Final Fantasy Tactics. Really? Um, oh, not tactics. the Game Boy Advance one, the, right. the Sony PlayStation game. Yeah, so nice. That was my favorite game with Ramza. Mm. With two other people who have played it. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, my favorite game of all time. Um, like I said, I think we spoke about moments in games and Final Fantasy X when Titus yep. uh, you know, fades away into the ether. Spoiler alert. <laughs> 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 right at the end. But yeah, that was a cry moment for me. Yeah. Um, also just like, you know, it was another like goosebumpy scene. Mm. You remember in Final Fantasy X when right at the start, when, when Titus has the, the, the ball mm. and he's walking into the arena. Yeah. Ooh, that was, that was, but yeah, no, I, um, I am a, uh, big Final Fantasy fan. Are you a Final Fantasy fan? The last Final Fantasy game that I played properly, I don't know if you ever played it because I was a huge fan of the PSP. Final Fantasy Crisis Core is what I played on the PSP. I thought that game was so freaking Crisis awesome. Core. Yeah, it's honestly, Rob, I would check it. I actually think it's a game based on your preferences and 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 your your likes that you've said in this podcast so far. I actually think it's a game that you would Crisis like. Core. Search it up, man. I'm telling you right now. I thought Crisis that, Core was a banger. Is that is that in the Seven World, the Seven Realm? Uh that is, it's. I think it's technically a prequel. Um, but I'll be honest, man. It's been like years since I played it. There's actually a, a remake as well. Um, so, yeah, yeah. It's you control Zach Fair. Do you know who Zach Fair is? No, probably not. That's <laughs> the guy who Cloud takes his name from, isn't it? Like takes his identity. I think you're right. Isn't it? I is it? I don't remember. It like, was so long ago, Rob. I'll be honest. Like, I'm, you know, Final Fantasy is not my big thing. Well, because. This is my thing. I've never liked Final Fantasy VII. And I know everybody's like, Final Fantasy VII's the best. It is it's the, the best. best. It wasn't. It okay. wasn't. Uh, no, it's not. Oh, come on, it's like eight. <laughs> eight was like, is was way better than seven. I like eight. Not many, not many people liked eight. Eight was great, dude. The story yeah. was wicked. The relationships were all like so weird. It was a weird thing. It was like the whole thing is weird. It was just, and they they went around on these little academy, floating <laughs> academies, and they went to war against each other. None of it made sense. <laughs> it was it was phenomenal, dude. And they had they had the card game, the Final Fantasy yeah. Eight card game. That was great on itself. Like Squall smashes Cloud. But you didn't but like, like seven. That's the only insane. thing I remember, I, I've played seven. I mm. just never liked it. Fair um, enough. The, the one thing I never under like from so from from my recollection, mm. isn't Cloud like a soldier that went to some space hub and he met <laughs> Cloud and then was like, and then came back as him. Isn't that how? Isn't that what happens? I honestly do not remember, man. <laughs> is 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 Zach Fair? Who Cloud becomes? So I've got here, I've searched it up. Cloud was initially known as X Soldier. Does that ring any bells in Final Fantasy VII? Yeah, because. Yeah. yeah because. Um, isn't that who Cloud was working for? 
Look, I I don't want to give away spoilers to pre- people. It is the prequel to Seven. Yeah, yeah. It is the prequel, bro. If if you haven't worked out <laughs> Seven's storyline by now, well, you don't know. People like, get angry about that made, stuff. They've made. Oh, they've made 17 movies, four <laughs> remakes, seven expansions. Like, come on, bro. Uh, <laughs> like, it was it was made when people were still drawing on <laughs> Slate. Well, well speaking like, of, like, the, the sequels yeah. and all the other games that they're releasing, are you planning on playing Final Fantasy 16 or not? Uh, probably not. Fair. Fair. <laughs> There's too many numbers. I, and that's why I Just wanted because, to chat about it. Too many numbers. N- no, I... I, I cannot play any game that I can't do my own hair up and name my character. I, just, <laughs> I have to be able to name my own dudes. I have to be able to do my face, my hair. That's, ba- that's such a very like, specific I thing. I can't, I, can't, I can't get immersed anymore unless I can do that. Fair. You know? um, All right. All right. In what? the earlier games, they let you they let you be able to like rename your dudes at least. Mm. And now they don't do that. You know, and I was a big Final Fantasy fan, by the way. Uh, yeah. I've played... I played what four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, two. Uh, played twelve. Twelve would have to be one of my favorites. They yep. came out with that active battle system, the first one to do it in the Final Fantasy series. That was wicked. Yep. There was a way you could set your gambits up so that your dudes could auto battle. Mm. It was unreal. Mm. Like loved it, loved it. Games haven't been able to recreate that properly today. The gambit system of Final Fantasy XII was unreal. People in the comments agree with me. You know it. <laughs> um, didn't like lightning. Didn't like that 15. Played the crappy online one before the good online one came out. Yeah. Played the good online one. And, yeah, so guess I'm a fan. I mean, that that online one that you're talking about, that still has a huge active community um, that's still kicking today. But, like, I'm probably going to check it out. I'm, I'm interested to see what they are doing with Final Fantasy 16, but I haven't played it in so long. I feel like I'm just going to be dropped in the middle of nowhere. Mm. Like, you remember Lord of the Rings where Gandalf mm. is just like, I have no memory of this place. That's how I'm going to feel. It's going to be completely <laughs> insane, but <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, well, and another thing is like none of the Final Fantasy worlds were the same. No. They were always kind of different. They like completely different. And the only one I really liked was the one in Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. So fair enough. Fair and ten, enough. ten wasn't bad. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens. Like I, th- I feel like they have a bit of a job to do, just trying to communicate to to people that aren't Final Fantasy fans <clears throat> why you have to play the number sixteen and mm-hmm. do you need to play any of the previous ones to actually catch up. That's probably the biggest issue that they have in in terms of marketing this game. Um, but next up, we have EA finally revealing their logo for EA Sport FC. A bit of background. So obviously we have the FIFA games, if, if you're a, uh, a football fan or a soccer fan playing those games. And they have had a, an agreement with FIFA for years to release FIFA games. And that has ended. But EA wants that money because FIFA has made so many, like billions of billions of dollars for them. Absolutely insane. So they are now releasing EA Sport FC not FIFA, but they're still trying to go with their own football game. And they can do that because they can they can reach individual agreements with like the team, so Real Madrid, United, and whatever, and they can still put together a football game. Um, but Rob, are you are you a FIFA fan? Uh, no, no, I am not. I'm I, so, uh, I, I remember trying to play it yeah. back when it first came out. Yeah. And uh, my brother absolutely <laughs> playing like <laughs> Running a muck on me with like all those those tricks. He was playing like Ronaldinho and just like absolutely schooling me. <laughs> and I said, "This game's stupid and never play it again." <laughs> well, would you, would you, now this this is like going to be the rebirth, a new football game. Would you give it a go? Because you don't seem to be like much of a sports game fan to me at all. Like you like what you like, and that's about it. Yeah, no, nah, probably not. I, like I feel like sports games. They're fun because you beat other people at them. Yeah, and I don't, I don't play a lot of um, online competitive right now. Yeah, I haven't for years, so I don't, I don't think I will be. But I don't know if the boys want to get together and make a team. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I might tune in, tune in on a Sunday night or something. I, I feel like it would make for some for some awesome streams if you wanted to play. But we'll see how good EA Sport mm. FC. There's a bit of a concern that it's not going to shape up to yeah. the legacy that I, FIFA ha- has kind of left behind it. Yeah, well, and that's it. Like, that's my biggest thing. It's like, because 
the FIFA community yeah. are very, very loyal. <laughs> Stuck. Like they've let's be honest, guys. You guys have bought the same game for 10 years. They, they <laughs> like, absolutely <and> have. <laughs> re-bought it year after year, dude. Like <laughs> the same one. Yeah. <laughs> Zero changes. The same one year after year. So hats off to your committed <laughs> like but who are you committed to? Are you committed to FIFA? Or are you committed to EA games? Yeah. Because but you gotta you gotta think FIFA is not gonna be taking the engines with them. No. You know? No. And that's that's what makes a game, really. You can slap any label on it. Yeah, I mean, it, it will be interesting. That's what I want to keep an eye on. Who does mm. FIFA go to? If Because my guess is, like, I don't know anything, but my guess is that money was probably at, the, at play here, and that's why the agreement came to an end. Who does FIFA go to to create their now FIFA games? Because I'm sure they're going to want a little bit of that FIFA money, but what developer out there could do justice to to the FIFA games? I don't know. Mm. It's a really hard one. It's as you said, Rob. There's such a committed, rabid fan base that have spent like literally billions of dollars on that franchise. So <laughs> it'll be with all like the, the, the FIFA packs. I don't the understand same it. Game. I, I, know, I know. <laughs> Building their teams. The same game. Uh, but let's see what happens next. Um, the, the last piece of gaming news that we have is uh, <clears throat> Bethesda releasing Ghostwire Tokyo and Xbox Game Pass. So. Bethesda obviously had had a, an exclusivity agreement when it came to Deathloop and also Ghostwire Tokyo. So those games were PlayStation exclusives. Eventually, Deathloop, um, eventually, sorry, uh, Ghostwire coming now to to Xbox Game Pass and to Xbox. Rob, did you ever uh, get the chance to play Ghostwire Tokyo? It's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, it's a um, it's a really fun game. It's so pretty, man. Like, if if no one's played this game and, and you are on Xbox and you do have Game Pass, I'd highly recommend that you check it out. It has an 84 in Metacritic right now, but the aesthetic is so damn cool. And Rob, this is you and I being anime fans. It's like our bloody dream. It looks incredible. You, you're running around yeah. Shibuya, just enjoying the scenery more than anything. And honestly, it feels like you're, you're in freaking Naruto. It is such a cool game. Yeah, it it um it really captivates and immerses you into into the experience, and um, yeah, it, it it's a it's a great game to just flick on and lose several hours into. You, yeah, you lose track of time so fast with that one. Yeah, it's one of the games that like I started up in the morning on a day off. Yeah, and then my kids at home <laughs> all of a sudden from school. <laughs> you know? Where did you come from? <laughs> no, it, yeah, it was, was great. Like, man, I'm I'm. I've made no progress. <laughs> <laughs> I remember playing it in, in, in a similar way because you can just do random side stuff and never actually finish the game. I was just exploring Japan. It was such a cool... Because you had that... If you remember, Rob, you had the, the kind of gliding technique. So you can grapple your way up to buildings and just glide down, go wherever you want, fight enemy. It was such a very, very cool game. So if you do have the opportunity to play it on Xbox... Do so. Honestly, we would recommend it, especially now that it's on Game Pass. Um, but Rob, that's pretty much all the the games news this week. We're getting up onto that hour point, so it's been. A, this is going to be a decently long we are, podcast. We are, we are. Um, but quickly, Rob, what are you playing this week, or what have you been watching? I'm going to try and cram this in in six minutes, so we don't get too <laughs> over our usual. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I've been playing Pathfinder: Wrath of the Righteous still. Yep. Um, Fair. I've hit Act Three. Mm-hmm. On solo core, yeah, which is uh, it's it's the combat's much easier now, but I don't know, I'm struggling to play it right now because it's very heavily tied to a story, yeah, and it's I don't know, it's like got to talk to this fella, find out what he wants, talk to this guy, find out what he wants, f- get an update on the 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 war with the demons by this person, get an yeah. update on this guy. I don't care, <laughs> I don't care. I understand I'm the leader of all this stuff. <laughs> But I just want to make things explode. Fair. <laughs> like, I just want to make you explode. You know, a little bit of banter and then yeah. continue my way. It's just too much. <laughs> it, it's just navigating me too much into the story. Like I like story, but but more like point, give me a direction. Yeah. And give me a reason ahead there. Like that, it's just managing people asking. It, it's very big into the law and the storytelling it's a pathfinder game yeah. you know based on dnd like it's it that's the type of game it is but mate i've just stopped caring i just want to wow. <laughs> i just want to gear me up and go semi 
Like, <laughs> I want someone else to be the leader. I don't want to be the leader. Are you going to you stop know, I just want to be a goon. You point, point, point me at someone and I'll go fight him. Um, I don't think I'll stop because I stopped last time at this act. I think I'll, I'll bull through it. Yeah. But I think the – I'm not going to get the best outcome because I'm going to stop caring about your decisions. Because if you, <laughs> the decisions you make change the outcome of the game, yeah. And if you stop caring, it's you- going to change things a lot. But I intend on just becoming like a like a bad dude anyway, so I don't care. I mean, who who, who who cares? Like, I don't know how the game ends, but like, it's probably like like is it like Fallout where there's just like a bunch of end cards and it tells you what roughly happened? I mean, who really cares at that stage, right? <sighs> It matters, though. You know it does. does Don't it be matter? like you didn't watch them. Come on, does it? Did you? You care? know you watch those end cards, and when <laughs> when you get the card that says one of the companions that you could have helped <laughs> didn't help, you know it makes you hate yourself. <laughs> you know, I don't know. So that's I'm still struggling with that though. There was the the new DLC for Rogue's Tale, yeah. one of the best rogue likes I've ever played, dropped. And I'm keen for that. There's some updates. Uh, you ever played those game? Um, the game. My Time in Porsche? No, never did. Well, there's the next one, My Time in Sandrock's out, and they've done some updates on that. Okay. I jumped into it at the beginning. It's like one of those ones where you just build a house, yep. make a farm, cool, sell to people. Yeah. Again, I stopped playing it because they, they kept making me talk to people <laughs> <laughs> in the game. And I, I'm sensitive to theme here, Rob. I just want to... <laughs> I just want to. I just want to grow stuff, get rich. <laughs> um, in terms of watching, I um, honestly, I've been. I'm waiting a little bit for the new season mm. of uh, of anime to come out. I think it's just started started coming out, and I it has. usually wait till there's about four episodes before I dive into that. Yeah. Um, but what have I been watching? What was what was the last thing I watched? I don't know. I, I just haven't really been able to find anything. Fair, fair. I mean, in terms of what I'm watching, uh, in in anime, like new Demon Slayer season has started up. I know you consider that a a bit of a a mainstream anime, but it started off really strongly. I actually watched it and like you could go to the cinema and watch a recap of the previous season and then they showed you the first episode of the new season. So essentially that just came out again um, on Crunchyroll on the weekend. So I watched that. That was pretty cool. I'm pretty keen to see what happens. And I've just been trying to get through God of War still. And it, God, I, I really like God of War. <laughs> it's a forever game. It's a forever game. And don't get me wrong. It's a great game. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to finish it. Did you ever hear of God of War Ragnarok? And in terms of like how much advice the characters give you to like finish the, like do the puzzles and go in the right direction. They just keep telling you to do things like, oh, Kratos, maybe you want to do this. Oh, make sure you defend yourself. Throughout, like it's, I'm literally over halfway into the game, and they're still telling me things. I'm like, come on, just like stop treating me like I'm stupid. <laughs> I wish you could turn it off. <laughs> you know what I mean? You might be able to just turn the voice off. You can't. No, <laughs> you can't. There was even a funny story, bro. Oh, the, the voice actor for Atreus or one of them came out and said, I was getting annoyed by my character telling me what to do when I was playing the game. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah. I, I, But that's why I like roguelike so much. I like, yeah. I don't know, just being left, left to my own devices. I don't hate games kind of like forcing you down story paths or tutorial paths or this direction for help or that but i'm a sucker for punishment though we spoke about before you are for sure well let's let's see what happens like there might be a, a bunch of new games come this june that that you are very interested in but in terms of the the final segment we have the questions we're answering questions now that you're asking on youtube so again please let us know your questions in the comments if you want to be part of the segment but first up we've got alexis hope asking rob would you ever decide to live stream or make gaming youtube videos rob you have live stream in the past is that something that you want to do again or do you want to make gaming videos like what do you what are your thoughts about that well this obviously has to be targeted towards me because you already i do i do (laughs) do gaming (laughs) youtubes so so um yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely interested because I, I have I have Twitch streamed before, yeah. but put it on hiatus for a while. And after, because I wanted to move into this podcasting scene with yourself, yeah. And um, I'm, I'm really enjoying the scene. I I could see myself live streaming 
maybe with y- yourself through through the YouTube platform. Yeah, I'm enjoying the YouTube platform uh, at the moment, but um, yeah, yeah, I would I would like to head in that direction, but right now I'm really just focusing my energy on on, on the podcast just because uh, having a lot of fun with it, you know, and I think 100%. I think a lot of people are are really liking it. No, I, I, the comments so far have been absolutely incredibly positive, and it's awesome to see that literally on every single episode, how positive that you're all being. I mean, with this channel, like who knows? Because we talked about Rob doing the fight companions for, for future, especially like main UFC events, UFC 288, whatever it might be. We can do those live streams from this channel. If it gets to that stage where we're like, you know what, we could do some gaming videos or whatever, like I don't think anything is if, is off the table. If this channel grows, then... Who knows what we could be doing? You know what I mean. The world is our oyster, honestly. The and yeah, and it, it's it's all thanks to you guys. Like the the more you guys are tuning in and giving us that positive feedback and yeah. sharing it through you know through word of mouth, it's um yeah the with the the the, the bigger base, the the more options that open up for us for sure. Uh, the next question that we have is from Elderly Infant. Great name. If you both had to fight each other on Street Fighter using your respective mains, who would be most likely to win? Rob, are you a Street Fighter fan? I would destroy you. Okay, who would you who would, would you who would you be in Street Fighter? Hold on. First, well, who's your main? Ak- Akuma. Ah, uh, that's uh, yeah. I mean, I, I my main is Ken. But I know how powerful Akuma is. Like, he's, but uh, can I say this, Rob? But yeah. if you're not careful, Akuma takes a lot of damage. That's that's he's very strong, but he also takes he hits does. really badly. So you think you would beat me, Ken he versus does. Akuma? Oh, well, we we need to we need to set this up because <laughs> I, I I like the response. I like the confidence that you have. <laughs> To, to even say I'm a Ken main, like then yeah. oh, let's set this up. We let's could set do this it, up. Man. We will. Yeah, we got to set this up. I don't know how we're going to do it. I'm going to leave that to you to work out because you're the brains <laughs> of, of the of the technical side. But um, let's set this up. I'll buy the game. We can punch on, record it, and All you right. can feed it into the the end of one of the episodes. We got to figure so out elderly infant. I'm going. Yeah. To- <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do it for you. We gotta figure out which Street Stamp Fighter. This one out. Which is it Street Fighter? We could do Street Fighter like two, one of the originals, or we could do one of the newer ones. Street Fighter two versus SNK. Okay. Um, let let's let's figure out what we would play it on, like presuming it's probably all on our PCs. We'll try and set it up. All right. We're gonna we're gonna try and set it up. Ken versus yeah. Akuma. Who's gonna win? Maybe like best two out of three or something like that. Um, but the next question that we have is from It's gotta be two out of three. Yeah, it's gotta be two out of three. Uh Spartan Cosmo, Rob, if you had to fight one from from software boss in MMA, who would it be? Oh, these are great questions. Spartan <laughs> Cosmos, hats off. That is a that is a sick yeah, question. I thought you'd like it. I I love that. I love that so much. Um I'm gonna do you have something at the top of your head? Because I need I need a moment to think. I so from software games have like like I I I'm a fan of from software, don't Dark get me wrong. Souls. But yeah, it's it Dark Souls it, it's a hard one because the question is asking yeah, you. I know. What would like who would you want to fight in MMA? And kind of like the, the question the other week, you want to fight someone mm-hmm. easy, right? You literally want to fight the easiest person so you're not yeah. having a hard time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you want, I want to go Google mm-hmm. from software so easiest boss. I know who I'm gonna fight. All right, go on. So, say I'm gonna fight I'm gonna fight the tutorial boss <laughs> in 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 the first in Dark Souls Elden game. Ring. You know how like ah oh. yeah, no Elden Ring. So like All right. after you die to the the big marionette dude yep. and you jump down that hole yep. and you go through the little walkways, there's the the soldier, yeah. the stock standard <laughs> undead soldier. He gets a little boss health bar. He's absolutely garbage. That's who I'm fighting. Me and I, him, bare I, knuckle combat. Are I you talking about soldier, soldier of Godric? Is that the one? I think is that's, that the, the first boss? I like think the that's the first, name. Yeah. Is it coming up as a boss? Um, I mean, technically, it's if a so, boss. then yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about because I do him, bro. Yeah, like no, no swords, like bare fisted combat. <laughs> I do him. I win. Well, you know I what? Win. Uh, you can't copy me. So who are you? Oh, picking? come on! <laughs> oh, hold up. I'm actually going to go nah, on an article nah. here, and 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 number one. Okay. Actually, this is a pretty good answer. Do you remember Pinwheel from the first Dark Souls? 
Yeah, I do. Yeah, what, what, about, what about Pinwheel? He wasn't easy, but. I mean, he's one of the easier fights. It's Dark Souls. Every fight is hard. What? Like, what are you going to pick? Yeah, but if we're talking about Dark Souls ones, because I, I played the remake not too long ago, probably about, yeah. I don't know, a year ago maybe, and I don't remember. I don't think there was a cheese, cheese strategy by the – I don't, I remember if it was easy, but I don't remember him mm. being – or did he lock himself out and you can't kill him? Like he can't kill you. But I, I don't know. Remember, you're fighting Pinwheel, which is one one of those big – he's like a spinning dude. He's like the dude's yeah. – like you hate you hate those dudes. You're fighting him in an octagon, dude. He does you. There's no cheese mechanics. <laughs> well, you, you you're took done. away the easy answer of, of the soldier of God. <laughs> you're, you're done. Hold dude. on, but we're going to ask the question: out. Is it MMA rules, or do they get a weapon? <clears throat> what if it? What if it's not? What does it matter? <laughs> well, then you could like, like just... you die faster. <laughs> It's not an easy question, you die right? Faster. Literally, like Spartan Cosmo well, picked from software. It is for me. <laughs> I mean, whatever. You took the easy one. I wouldn't even classify that as a boss. There you go. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, you got a boss bar, so there it yeah. is. The next question that we have is from Andrew. All right. On the topic of anime from the last podcast, in general, what are your top five anime? Oh, that's a punishing question. You can that do top three. So if you want to do top answer. three, you can. Even the ones that you remember. Like there's, there's so many really good ones, man. Like name a few. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw them out there. Just from the top of my head, yep. right now. Yeah. Some really stellar ones that stand out to me. All right, Samurai Champloo <laughs> or Champloo, <laughs> whatever. You just named them. Gate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gate. Okay. Samurai. Um. Yeah. 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 Kono Suba. You lie in April. Yeah. Fair. Uh, Code Geass. Um, 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 Gundam Wing. Wing. None of the others. <laughs> Gundam Wing was good. Yeah. Full Metal Panic. Full Metal Panic Fumofu. Okay. Rob, you are, you uh, are what's that, naming what are some obscure freaking anime, man. Good Lord. <laughs> no, these are bangers though. Like, Proper stellar they pieces. They can't all be like, bangers, right? They, oh, trust me. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh, Brotherhood, obviously. Like, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to, like, I know there's so many I can't, top of my head. Dude, you literally just, just, just named seven. Like you are, like, I feel like such a casual anime fan next to you. <laughs> that, that's nothing. That's just skimming, skimming the surface. There are some. There are some times I've watched a series before I've learned its name, Far and out. and then I go on to the next one, never, like never remembering what the hell, like I just watched. <laughs> I would love to see oh, your. Are you, are you watching this on Crunchyroll? Because I'd love to see your watch history. <laughs> I've used everything. Yeah. Every every sort of. Anime stuff. My watch history now is because I've watched so much anime, it's all just like recent season stuff. Fair. It's very hard yeah. for me to find anything anything good. Yeah. Like uh Yeah. Yeah. It's it's but no, they they there's some bangers. Like it's you'd have to give me a lot of time to work out my top five. Well, you know what? All right, how about this? Let's save it until you're ready, whether that's next week or or whatever. I want your definitive Top five anime, and not just ones that you've watched recently right. that you like. All right, so so Andrew, we're going to come back all to right. you on that. Rob's going to give you his his definitive top five anime. I can't wait for some random anime I've never heard of in my life. But moving on to the <laughs> last question from the one uh, question: What does Rob think of the Islam Makachev versus Volkanovski fight, and how does he think the rematch would go? That's essentially the question. What did you think of that fight? Mm. I thought it was a good fight. Yeah. Um, I thought Volk could have been granted the W and yes. no one would have really argued. Yep. You know, it was that close of a fight. Um, uh, the rematch, how does that go? It's hard to say. How long is Volk given to, to do the rematch? Um, as long as he needs. <laughs> I think, I, I think, well, you see Volk, took that last fight with the idea of putting on some beef, mm. but 
only enough so that he could go back down. I'd like to see what he does if he's if he goes up with no one foot out sort of option. True. Because he gets much bigger. Mm. Because he the size difference was quite something in that fight. And I don't yeah. think Islam holds him down for as long as he did, which he couldn't really do to begin with. Mm. Um if Volk is a proper lightweight. Because Volk's Volk was hurting Islam with his strikes. Was. And Volk, like I said, wasn't I don't think he was a full fully committed lightweight. Um, but he wasn't like that. That's the Mark simple answer. It gives time. It gives give, <clears throat> gives Makachev much more time yeah. to work out a counter to Volkanovski's striking. Yeah, which is something. But honestly, I, th- I think Volk wins. I think in a rematch, I think Volk wins. So you you think he wins if like let's say hypothetically like he loses the title and he's like you know what I want to move up properly commit to the division he fights Makachev again then you think he wins that. Yeah, I think he wins. I do. I really do. All right. Well, well, that's the answer. There you go, the one. And thank you, everyone, for, for asking your questions on the latest episode, episode five of MM Arcade. Rob, how you feeling? This is, I think this is our longest episode. I think it is. <laughs> I, th- I think so, too. It's too long. I wanted to do 30-minute episodes, but here we are an hour 18 in <laughs> and going still. He's going to keep her- <laughs> the, the problem is, Rob, people like, the long episodes they they would have you here for two hours if they could <laughs> mate I, I remember speaking to you when we started i wanted half hour episodes yeah, that, that, that was <laughs> never happening look maybe if that we would never, you, you, you agreed you were like yeah yeah we could we could do that no worries no worries <laughs> <laughs> i i kind of agree but knew at the back of my head he's just gonna have to accept these are gonna be an hour long <laughs> uh, but i'm i'm definitely enjoying it and I, I know you are also like thank you very yeah. much to all our listeners out there and, and and viewers and for the responses the feedback we you can see we're taking it all on board couldn't be couldn't have gotten to episode five without you guys uh, stay tuned because sure. there's, there's just more to come yep more to come we've got our reactions after the next ufc fight night Got some exciting events coming up. So thank you, everyone, for watching watching or listening, depending on where you are. We're on Spotify, Deezer, Apple Podcasts, everything. So tune in next week for Episode 6. Thank you so much, and we'll see you then.